Thank you. I'm already crying. I just want to wish all you beautiful mothers a happy, happy, joyous Mother's Day. Mothers, you are a tremendous gift. And um, today I just want to honor you. Pastor Steve asked me to speak. Um, didn't think I was really qualified to, but he reminds me that all of us, if we're able to, that he can use us. And um, so I give God all the glory today because he's the one that I'm serving and I just want to make my daddy proud. Amen. Amen. But today is a special day for you mothers. Um, my mother is not here today. She lives in California, where I was born and raised. But I know that she's with me in spirit. And I have my mother-in-law, Debbie, and my grandma, John's grandma, and friends here today. And I just honor you. Thank you for being here. And my children. Boys, can you stand up? These are my little jewels. I love you, boys, so much. I have to say that being a mother is such a high calling of God. It's one that I've never really taken lightly. And I'll have to say the reason why I don't take it lightly is because I was born and raised not in a Christian home. My parents were good parents, and they tried the best they could with, you know, living in a worldly home. They were good parents. They tried. But how many knows when you have a lot of baggage, and you're brought up with a lot of baggage, and you have children, and you just kind of pass that baggage on to your offspring, generational uh, stuff. Um, but, you know, I used to despise the way I was raised. I really, I would cry myself to sleep at night as a child because I just, I didn't understand. My parents were divorced. There was, there was addiction problems. I mean, addictions from, you know, the smallest addictions to, you know, daddy not coming home or mama being out or, you know, just things like that. that just, um, but today I can stand here and say that God uses everything everything, the good and the bad, Amen. for his glory. Because if I had a perfect Christian home, I wouldn't have relied on God. Like, I, I know my personality, and I know that the struggles have kept me at Jesus' feet. Amen. That's and that's what he wants. Yeah. Even if we have a broken heart or things that we go through, he, he's honored and glorified by that, you know. Yeah. But it's just giving him the pieces. And I remember giving my heart to the Lord when I was a kid, and um, we had like those good news clubs. I don't know if you remember good news clubs where they had like little teachers going to houses and teaching about Jesus. And I gave my heart to the Lord when I was about 10 years old. And I actually did it for a piece of candy. I liked to eat growing up, but um, I still love to eat. But anyways, um, I got the candy and got Jesus. Well, I, I was a happy girl. <laughs> but anyways, I just thought we could just honor God and just pray before we get started. Lord God, I just thank you. I thank you so much, Lord, that you meet us here, that you will bless the mothers today, Lord God, that, Father, you would just hide me behind your cross, Lord God, and I just thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, and I ask you to bless these mothers that you have brought here today, that they would just get something from you, Lord, that they can take away, Lord God, and just be encouraged and blessed. Father, most of all, Lord God, that your name would be glorified. Father, because this world is, is all about you anyways, Lord. Help us to keep our focus and our minds upon you, Lord. Jesus, help us. Help us to run our races, Lord God. Father, because one day we're going to see your face. And, Father, help us. Help us to be the wives and the, wom the women and the mothers and the daughters that you have called us to be, Father God. Raise us up, Lord. Raise us up, Lord God, that we would be mighty, not in ourselves, but through you, Lord God. 
and we would just give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen. 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 Well, I was, I was just thinking about what I wanted to speak about this morning. And my husband, I think, was, was, was laughing at me because I had, like, the kitchen table. There was nowhere for him to eat dinner because I had papers all over from studying. And, and um, he's been very patient with me. I've been kind of a train wreck this week because I've been like, oh stressed out and so he's like you'll do fine so I thank you honey for coming and supporting me today <laughs> but anyways I was I was going to speak on the first mother I was going to speak today of Eve and she is just one woman that I thought you know through everything she's gone through, through the sin and redemption plan. And I thought, Lord, that's really what I want to speak on today because she has such a story, just such a story of, of um, you know, knowing, knowing a, a perfect world. And, and I'm thinking, wow, Lord, you know, if you can use her and buy her back and still had a plan, I thought, what, a, what an amazing mother, being a first mother. Uh, the mother of all living. So I just thought she would be just so amazing to speak about today. And I started to think for mothers, I'm like, you know, I just want more of an encouraging message for you ladies. And so as I started to do a little bit more studies, I came across Deborah. And I thought, you know, we're in a day and age that we need to learn to rise up and take our places, and I thought, I did, a, I did a study on her, and she is a phenomenal woman, Amen. mighty woman in the Lord, and I have a lot of Debras in my family, my mother-in-law is Deborah, my mother is Deborah, and I know Pastor Steve's wife is a Debbie too, she's a mighty woman, so I was thinking about how, how she was like a mighty woman in the Lord because of how she honored the Lord. And I, I've, I've, I've just studied a little bit about women and how what made them great and their downfalls, everything. You know, we all go through things in life that we have our pitfalls and everything. But one thing about Deborah is that she was, she was actually the first judge in Israel. She was the, the do-good woman. She was the first judge. She led people out of oppression I mean, this was a mighty woman of God, Amen. and I just thought she was the do-right woman, and I thought she was like the head leader that everybody came to her, and I thought, wow, that's just, that is just mighty and, and honorable that she would say yes to the Lord and rise up to be the woman that she was called to be. So for Deborah, she is amazing. If you want to read her story, it's in the book of Judges, and she is just phenomenal. Well, I was thinking about some other women in the Bible, and I thought Mary, of course, was the one that I thought was very dear and special to my heart. And um, Elizabeth as well. I mean, we could go through all the women in the Bible, the, the Elizabeth that carried John the Baptist, and how Elizabeth waited. She waited I mean, she was well up in years, and she couldn't have a child. And I thought, wow, there's some women that have to wait until that promise is fulfilled. You know, because sometimes we're wanting a child, and, and the Lord just, it's not his timing. And, and waiting, it, it, it's, it's really hard to wait yes, when the Lord is, you know, you're ready for this baby. You're ready, ready for a family. Um, but he showed me. How amazing it is when you wait and you're obedient. But God heard Elizabeth's prayer. God heard her. And sometimes we go through life and we don't realize that there's a time that God will place us and he will answer our prayers. But we have to just have faith and keep walking. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Luke. And I want to talk a little bit about Elizabeth this morning. It's the first chapter. It 
I will go down to verse 7. And here it says, because they had no child. And they prayed for a child, and they were up in years. They were both advanced in years until the angel of the Lord came to Zechariah. He had been praying in the temple. I don't know how many times you've been praying for God to answer your prayer in the temple. I don't know how many times I have prayed for God to move or do certain things, and I haven't heard his voice. If you go on to verse 13, the angel came and said, your, your prayer has been heard. You will bear a son, and his name will be John. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. He came before Jesus, and there was a plan for him to be that forerunner for the Lord. Amen. And so we just have to trust in the Lord. I know that there's a story I'm going to share a little bit about my mother. Um, my mother had me when she was right out of high school, and um, it was amazing. It was just amazing because she, she prayed for a baby, prayed for actually a daughter, and when she gave birth to me, it was really sad because after I was born, my parents had split up like shortly after my birth. And um, it was a really hard, hard time for my mom. But with that being said, she got remarried and went on living with her new husband. And um, years later, um, she had prayed for another child. And she had had miscarriages after miscarriages. And, you know, if you, uh, if it's, it's very, very difficult when you're praying for a baby and, and you just can't conceive and, and you know, you just, you long for a child. Yes. And um, I remember my mom telling me this, that she was not a Christian, but she prayed. She prayed just like Elizabeth did and just like Hannah. Hannah prayed as well. But my mom said to me, she said, Tanya, she said, after 10 years of waiting for a child, she said, I finally, I knew there was a God, but she didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord. She wasn't saved, but she knew there was a God, and she prayed. She said, I cried out to God, <laughs> God, if you're there, you know. Um, she said, I, I just, I, I want a baby. I want a baby so bad. I mean, just tears. I mean, you can just imagine, you know, a woman longing for a child, the tears flowing. Well, after she prayed, and she also told me this key point. She said, God, if you give me a child, I will raise him for you. And I thought, wow, okay, because I never remember going to church. So I'm thinking, where is this story going? So after, after she had conceived, the Lord heard her prayer, and that's the key. The Lord hears our prayers. It's in his timing. And so my mom conceived. I was 15 when my sister Shelby was born. And she forgot what she had prayed. The Lord didn't. Amen. The Lord did not forget what she had said to the Lord. And she prayed. Um, there was tragedy in our family. And my stepfather had gotten a, a fatal crash. And through that fatality, my mom was at the point of brokenness. I mean, to the point of that she was at the end of her rope. And she said, as soon as I buried your stepfather, I remembered what I had, I remembered what I had said to the Lord. Hallelujah. That she would raise that child for the Lord. So the Lord had to take her around. I mean, sometimes we have to go around those mountains, but she she knew at that point I was supposed to raise Shelby for the Lord. And so she called me. I was already in Illinois, and she said, Tanya, I'm, I'm going to go back to church. I've given my heart to the Lord. 
And she was, I mean, on fire. I mean, it was like, and I was just out here and just gave my heart to the Lord in 1994. I was a new Christian and in a little, in our Baptist church at Park Meadows. And I remember her calling me and saying, Tanya, she goes, I, I, I received Christ. I am, I am just like, I am so full of him. I am just so excited. I'm just, I mean, through the tragedy, through the tragedy. And I thought, wow. So we got some plane tickets together and we went out there for, um, it was that first um, Thanksgiving after my stepdad had passed away. And I was going to go out there and, you know, comfort my mom and, and be with her. Well, she was like, no. She's like, rejoice, you know, rejoice. It, it, it's just, and, and she had the, you got to understand, I was raised where she had walls up all the time. So if I didn't do something she liked, it was like walls up, walls up, you know. So I, I never felt like I was, I was good enough or I could, you know. And it's because of how she was raised. She didn't mean to be that way. It's just. It's just how you're raised. It's just generational stuff. Well, she um, she was telling me how much she loved my husband and loved my boys. And she said, God is just moving and doing just great and mighty things. And she goes, you're going to have to come to my church. And I thought it was like it was like a Pentecostal Holy Roller church, church, you know. And so we I walked in her church. And, I mean, there was dancers. And I'm thinking, is this, what, where am I? You know, because I was thinking, you know, because like my dad was Catholic and they, I mean, they sat and they did, you know, it was just a totally different service that I was used to. And she grabbed, my mom grabbed her tambourine and was running up and down the aisles. And I thought, I didn't recognize her. I did not recognize her at all. And she's like, this is, this is, this is Jesus. Like, this is what he does after you get saved and filled and and I'll tell you, at that moment, it was the first time I connected with her. Not only is like, Hello. yeah, we're mother and daughter, and I loved her to pieces, but there was always something hindering, you know? There was always something there just from all of our generational stuff. But it was actually the first time I stepped in, and I saw her like as my sister, my mother. Like, I was just so excited. So anyways, I'm like, you got an extra tambourine? Like, I want to praise the Lord with you. And she just exuberated Jesus. And I remember, like, all her friends coming around. And it, it's just, you know, when you have the Lord, even if you go through hard times, it's like you just have this shine to you. Amen. You know? It's like every time, every time I see Sister Jeannie, she's just like, hi, ah, you know, she's just all full of the Lord. And, I mean, you can, you can tell the ones that are full of Jesus, you know? And um, because you can put a smile on. We know how, we know our future. We know we have a hope Amen. beyond these tears. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, life is hard. Amen. You know, and every time, like this morning, I walked in and I felt the heaviness. And yeah, of course, there's so much going on right now. But he's saying, take off the heaviness and put on praise. Amen. Put it on. Amen. Right? He's not going to do it for us. we got to put on the spirit of praise. I mean, I, there's been so many times that I just, I couldn't get myself to church. I'm just, you know, it's like once you get done with one attack, there's another one on this side. I'm like, you know what, devil, I'm tired. I am tired. I'm not going to take it no more. You know, you get to that point where it's just like, no more. Not, I'm, not, I'm not playing no more. So, I mean, we know how it ends, and so he's under our feet. Amen? Amen. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I have got to talk about Mary. Let's go to Luke, um, Luke chapter 1, and let's go to verse 26. Now, I don't know about you, but Mary, I know we always talk about Mary at Christmas time, but she's my woman, you know? <laughs> like, every time I think about her faithfulness, and what she went through. And yeah, we always say, well, she was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we say it so much, we just kind of, I don't know, we just become like used to like, yeah, born of, born of a Mary, you know, Virgin Mary. And well, anyways, let's read this together because it's just, it's phenomenal what the Lord was showing me. But 
Okay, so uh, chapter 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. This is amazing to me. Go down to verse 30. And after the angel came to her, look at what he says. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear is the worst enemy. I struggle with that so much. Like, I did not want to come up here. Like, my flesh was like, don't you go up there? You know? Like, because I don't know what it is. What are we afraid of? If God is with us and for us, who can be against us? Amen? Amen. But I'm thinking, here's Mary. She is basically a teenage young mother. Highly favored. I'm like, how beautiful is that that she is highly favored? Like, I'm like, how gorgeous. I love it. And then, then the angel's telling her, do not be afraid. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. And you will call his name Jesus. He will be great. This young mother is going to carry the son of God. Like, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what it looks like to you. But she hasn't even been married yet. And she's over here pregnant with the Holy Spirit. Like, she's going to go home and tell Joseph what? I mean, I'm sorry, but I mean, I know if I were to tell John before we got, really? Like, okay. I mean, you have to be so strong in the Lord for this to happen. Because then I thought she conceived. She went back into her town. Imagine what the people of her town were thinking about her. Are we able as Christians to, to be ridiculed? Like, because I don't know about you, but I, we're kind of peculiar. That's right, we are. You know? I mean, everybody else is going out clubbing and having fun. I'm like, they're having a good old time. I want to go. You know? But then the Lord's like, mm-mm. You're over here. I want you over here. You are to be separate. We're not called to be separate to be snobs. It's because the Lord wants to do something in us. I mean, what a waste if we don't allow the Lord to do something, to birth something beautiful. You know? I mean, it takes sacrifice. It does. And I'm learning that. I'm like, he says, it's your choice. You know? I set before you life and death. You can choose whatever you want. And he doesn't, he, but it's just, I don't know what it is, but every time I get off course and I go do my little thing, and then he, it's like the spirit of the Lord just draws me back, you know? And I'm thinking, what is it that Mary went through? And as you go down to this verse in, um, let me see. Oh, where is it when she says, she just, she just gives her, she says, be unto me, Lord, what you want. Like, she's so obedient. I don't know. Like, I'm still learning to be obedient, you know? Because, like, I'll be obedient for a while and then just kind of, I don't know, Lord. But Mary was like, that's fine. She didn't, she didn't know all the answers. We don't know all the answers walking into what the Lord has for us. I don't think, you know, to be quite honest, I don't think I want all the, I don't want to know everything. You know? Because then that's not walking out in faith. Right. So it's like, so here's Mary, and I'm thinking she's highly favored. She's pregnant with the promise of the Lord, and she's, she knows that, 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 that Jesus is coming, and now she's got to be prepared. But yet, could you imagine her loneliness? I mean, how many of you, of you mothers have ever been lonely? I mean, this past week I had, I had get, gotten together with some other ladies and I said, you know, sometimes doing the right thing, it's so lonely. You know? But I also know that it's, it's through that loneliness and 
and through those times where the Lord is drawing us unto him is when he creates the biggest miracles. Amen. And he's like, that's, what, that's the breeding ground I want for you. I want you to be set apart, your highly favored set apart. And, you know, it doesn't mean that he loved her more than anybody else, but he loves her uniquely. And, you know, like you women, like I see all you women and I think of like a flower garden. And, you know, the rose or the sunflower isn't as more beautiful than one another. I mean, they're unique. They have their own fragrance. They have their own beauty. I mean, I just, I, I just, I just think of, and it's, I used to be the type of Christian that could only worship God on the mountaintops. When things are going good, I'm like, praise you, God, Lord, you're so good. But down, down in the valleys, I'd be like, where are you? Am I the only one? Like, I would say, where are you, Lord? Like, I don't know why this is happening to me. If I'm doing the right thing, why aren't you taking care of this? I mean, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. But he's like, no. You see that valley over there? Go get yourself in that valley. I'll put a string of water through there for you. Don't you worry. But that's where things grow. It's in the valley. There's nothing that grows on mountaintops. But, yeah, it's all fun and, and good. But, you know, we can't live on desserts. Can you imagine if we ate cupcakes in the morning and cake at noon? And we'd be, we'd die. I'm just saying, you know, we got to get the real stuff. You know, the Lord is really wanting to do some real things in our life. And the thing is, it, it made me realize I was so thankful for my church. Like when I got saved in 94, I don't know what happened. It was like blinders on my eyes were off. And I thought, wow, okay, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. God has a purpose. And I, I, I mean, oh, I just, I get so excited because I'm thinking I get to raise my children for the Lord. I mean, I, I, I wasn't a perfect mom, but I, I wanted them to always know that when you go through something in life, don't be like a yo-yo. Don't be like that. Know that, know, be, stand firm. Like, even though, okay, oh, you're doing great this day, and then the next day something tragic happens. Listen, God is good all the time. Amen. All the time. And he wants to see, where is your faith? Do we only have faith in God because he answers our prayers and that everything is rosy? Well, I'm sorry. He wants to know, are you going to serve me in the valley? Right. I mean, Mary was, was, the angel came, and she was afraid. She was afraid. But she didn't speak doubt. She said, be unto me, Lord. Like the Lord is saying, do you, can, I, can I use you? Can I use your womb? He wants to birth some stuff. But he's, he's, he's wanting yielded vessels. You know, that's the whole thing. He's, he's, he's wanting to make this a breeding ground right here. So that way we can go out there and make a difference. That's what he's wanting to do. And then I thought... After, after I came to the Lord, it was amazing because it was like it, the blinders were off. And for the first time I saw, and my husband got saved the same year. And I was so thankful for my Baptist church, like, because growing up I had no stability whatsoever. I mean, I would walk to school, come home. I would, had a key around my neck. And, you know, like, nobody was home. Like, it was just, I raised myself, basically. I mean, my parents were working two jobs, and, um, but, you know, the thing is, God used that. God uses that. I used to despise those things, but not anymore, because the Lord takes the good, the bad, the ugly, and he says, you see that pain that you had that you cried yourself to sleep every night? He goes, I'm going to use that, because there's going to be other girls in the church there's going to be other girls out there that don't feel loved. And they feel like just unwanted. And I'm going to show them the love of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't have to be perfect to show them the love of the Lord. Right. God doesn't expect us to be perfect people. He does say be holy because he is holy. Yes. 
But you know, he's just wanting yielded vessels. Be it broken, it doesn't matter. He can use whatever. He just wants willing people, just like Mary. And I'm thinking, she had to walk alone. You know, she was lonely, but she wasn't alone. She had the Lord with her, and she knew that. But sometimes, even in this life, I mean, there's days I wake up, and the Lord will say, you know, go here or do that. And there's days that I feel alone, you know, because sometimes when you're doing the right thing, you're like, God, do you even see this? Like, do you see me? Do you, are you with me, Lord? You know, and he'll give me scriptures, never will I leave you. And we know the scriptures, but I want to feel them inside me, you know. And Mary must have known that her God walked with her to be able to just say, Lord, be it unto me. She's so beautiful. Like, I just love that. And even though she knew her son was going to die on the cross, she would have to sacrifice. I can't even imagine as being a mother and having to give up one of my children. I couldn't do it. I'm just human. I couldn't give up one, one of my children. That's how much God loves us. I can't even fathom or wrap my brain around it. Because I don't know about you, but moms, you know what I'm saying. When you have that child, I remember the first time I gave birth to my first son, George, and I was a young mom. And I remember I was in labor for four hours, and, I mean, he came pretty quick. And they wrapped him up, and I heard him crying, and I'm like, I don't even deserve him. I was such a young mother. I was, I was in high school, you know, I didn't know the Lord. I mean, yeah, I got saved when I was about 10, but we never went to church. I never read the Bible. I didn't, I didn't know the things of God. I was a really good sinner, you know? I mean, I tried to be a good person, but I fell into, you know, into sin and had a baby young and, but I remember giving birth to him and the, and, and the nurse wrapped him and, and set him on my belly. And I thought, he's so beautiful. This is such a gift I don't even deserve. You know, because I'm thinking of all the other mothers that want a child and can't have a baby. And I have this perfect child. And I remember unwrapping him and counting his toes and his fingers. And I'm like, and just kissing him. I mean, they probably think I'm nuts, but I'm just kissing him. I'm like, I have found my purpose. I have found my joy. And being a mother is such a high calling of the Lord to really listen to the Lord. And I said, Lord, help me to raise them because if, if anything else, if I give them education, that is great. Like if I give them food and water, the things that they need, that's wonderful. But I want to give them eternity. I want to open that up for them where they know. I don't care what you, I've told my boys. Well, I don't care what you go through. Don't ever forget the Lord because one day you're going you're gonna to die and you're going to be in front of him. All of us will be. It's appointed to want, want every man wants after to be in front of the Lord. Yeah. All of us. So even with my kids, I thought, I just, I want to raise them for God. Amen. And I just, there's really nothing else that matters to me. Right. You know? To raise them unto the Lord. To give them a gift. It's just such a precious, and and, and, you know, and I have failed them. I'm not a perfect mom. There's none of us that are perfect moms. But the Lord just wants us to be willing, you know, to teach him. My favorite time was when when the kids were little, tucking them in in bed and just praying over them. I I just loved it. I loved it. I wish I could have that time back, and they're, they're off on their own and raised. And, you know, I still have Nico's at home. He's 13, but now he's kind of like he shuts the door. Good night, Mom. You know, I'm like, well, I want to crawl into bed and pray with you, you know. But it's just those, it's enjoy those moments. If you have young kids, enjoy those moments because it's like you blink and, and that season is gone, you know. But then I think about like, I think about Ruth and her mother-in-law. I think about like what an amazing part that grandmothers can play that role, if they're yielded to the Lord, to teach them the things of the Lord, 
You know, it, I mean, grandmothers, you are so important. Yes, and not only the moms, but, you know, because moms get worn out. They're working. They've got things to do. But then it goes on to the next generation. My mom will call me on the phone and say, I've been praying for George. There's something going on. I'm praying for him. And I'm like, oh, okay, mom, pray, 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 you know. But, you know, we need praying grandmas. Hallelujah. We do. Yes, we Lord. just, we need that. So it's just, it's just amazing to me. Um, I just, and then for, for Mary to me, um, she was so precious to me, but then I thought about, well, she was highly favored. What about, what about the other women that were non-Jews? What about the women that weren't, they were the outcast and we look in, in Jesus' um, genealogy, and you got Tamar, you got Rahab and Ruth. Yes. And I thought, those were some messed up, those were bad girls. Yes. Like, God used them. Yes. And then my, my mind was like, I guess a religious mind. I'm thinking, why would you want to use those messed up girls? Like, I don't understand, even though I was messed up. But I'm like... You know, because now that I'm holier than, you know. And I'm thinking, he used the messed up. He did. There's nothing wasted in the kingdom. So I'm thinking, we all qualify? I'm like, glory be to God. Give me my tambourine. I'm good. Because I'm thinking, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, God is using the, the, the ones that are highly favored and walking with the Lord and obedient. And then he's using the prostitutes. When I learned that, it wrecked me completely because I said, God, I have such a heart for you. Like, I love him so much. Like, I just do. Like, I don't know, like, just the essence of me. It's just like, I love him. Because it's like, you know, you can, you can have a, a fight with your BFF or whatever or your mama, you know, and, or your husband or your wife. And, but the Lord is always there. And he wants what's best for you. And, and he loves us. Amen. He loves us in a, even in our dirty diapers. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I don't get it. I don't understand the love of God. And I'm still growing and learning. Yeah. And he gives me dreams and things that are just, like, amazing to me. I'm like, Lord, I want to be the woman, like, be it unto me, Lord, whatever you want to do. You know? And it's like, I'm still, I still got stuff going on on the side here. And I'm like, the Lord's like, you know, this thing over here and this thing over here, we're going to have to take care of that. You know, there's things that, you know, I don't want to give up. I'm just going to be honest, you know, sure. but the thing is, the Lord says, but if you, if you let go of that, then I can work, Glory. you know? And it's like, I'm trying to be oh, everybody's Holy Spirit. He goes, you are not the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you. You need to get your hands off of it and let me work. Yes. And so what we can do as mothers is praying. I want to pray my children and family into the kingdom, you know. Yes, but not only that, but it's by our life. And so the Lord is like, hey, I'm going to deal with your heart on this because you ain't going to be praying nobody into the kingdom and if, unless your heart, it needs to be softened, you know. There's things in life sometimes that make our hearts hard as mothers, I mean, I know it's, it's, I don't know what it is, but the first time, the first time I seen George and Danny get their driver's license and they took off down the road, I mean, like a bat out of, you know, where, and I thought they were just down the road. Like, I'm like, what, where'd they go? Like, I, I sat there with the curtains and I'm like, I'm bowling. I'm thinking, you know, and they're boys. So they're like, they're just like, they got their license. They were gone. I mean, they were gone. And I thought, and, and at that moment, it was like all the stuff that I had taught them, I'm just sitting there. It was reflection time, you know? So I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, Lord, did I teach them enough? Did I pray for them enough? Did I do what you called me to do? Because there's eventually that other season where that transitioning time where you've taught them, and now it's up to them to go and do what they've been called to do. And so, and that's why you've got to pull out the giftings of your children. Like, 
George, I mean, ever since he was a baby in diapers, he was outside mowing and edging, and I mean, he was landscaping, and I mean, he just, he could beautify just about anything. And Danny, you get him on the drums, you get him on the computer, he knows how to fix things, and and it's just, they're, they're, they have, they're, they're special giftings, and God makes us that way. We're all unique, you know? And, and it's like, it's up to us as mothers to draw that out, you know, and then use that to glorify God, you know? And that's what I tell them. You are so important. I tell my kids all the time. I said, there is no greater joy. I said, Lord, I know we're in a hard season right now, but there's no greater joy, I'm praying right now, that you will use them mightily. Like, I want to see... I want to see them serving God, you know? I mean, there's no, there's no greater joy as a mother. I want to see them serving God because that's what's going to last. That's the only thing that's going to last. So anyways, back to, back to Tamar, Ruth, and, and Rahab. I'm thinking of these are the three women to me that still had a purpose and a destiny for their lives that brought on Jesus. Like, I'm, I, I'm just, I'm amazed and overwhelmed that it makes me realize that our history, our history, whatever it is, does not define our destiny. And so it's like, it's turning back. The Lord's like, no, you're not back there no more. You need to right now cut everything off and look forward. And, and it's, you know, that's what he wants us to do. And so I was looking at the genealogy in the first chapter of Matthew. It's a list of gra- a grand total of 41 male ancestors of Jesus, beginning with Abraham. That's phenomenal to me. Five female ancestors. Three of them, Tamar, Rahab, Bathsheba, are colored by such a distasteful details of incest prostitution, fornication, murder. Jesus, the son of God, the perfect, perfect, without sin. He came and showed us that even on his branches, on his tree, he uses everything. So I want to tell you women that whether you had a, a, a bad past or you're going through a hard season right now or, you know, whatever it is, God doesn't waste anything. And God can use you. He wants to use you. You're so beautiful. You are so valuable. This world, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you something that my mama... When I, used, when I was little, I used to watch her get ready for work, and she was so beautiful on the outside. Um, she was beautiful. I'd watch her put her makeup on and get ready, and I'd go in her closet and put her high heels on. And, but, you know, when she came to the Lord, I saw a beauty in her that I wanted to be like. Because, yeah, she looked good on the outside, but... It wasn't attractive. Like, it was because she looked beautiful on the outside. And people in the world were drawn to that. But that doesn't last. That fades. And, and I'm, I'm not against, like, working out. I, you know, like me and my girl Christina, we do Zumba. We love it. We just, we're all over it. But, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking care of your, your temple, I get it. We should be healthy. For We can't work unless we're healthy, you know? Um, but the thing is, she was into modeling, and she was, like, trying to get parts in movies, and I never saw her. She's chasing after the wind. That world has nothing to offer you. And here we are trying to pull things out of the world, and the world has nothing for us. Nothing. You know? And so here I saw this beautiful woman, my mother, which I loved her so much, but I seen the way she was trying to be something. And she was so insecure and so unloved. My grandmother, this is very private, but my grandmother was raped and had my mom. 
And she never knew her father. And my grandmother despised her, despised her. So my mom was brought up with always trying to get attention from people and love. And will I be accepted if I do this movie? Will I be a movie star? Will I be? She was always chasing. She always wanted love. And, you know, us women, like, we want to be beautiful and we want to be, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But the Lord says, I want to give you beauty on the inside. I want to give you a beauty that when people see you, it's the love of Christ. It's that light that never goes out. And so, you know, although my mom did a lot of great things in the world, and I didn't get to see her much and spend a lot of time with her because she was chasing. Um, when she came to the Lord, she told me, she goes, you know, and we hear it so much that, you know, girls are always trying to get love from all the wrong places. But, you know, the thing is, I can't say I blame her. She had such a void. She didn't know her daddy. And her mother despised her. And it wasn't really her. It was because when my grandmother would see my mom, she would see that man. And so she was like, she didn't feel loved. So when she was brought up and the boy started saying, well, well, you are hot. You are gorgeous. You are this and that. Well, she fed on that, you know, because, like, I'm getting attention. Oh, this guy loves me. You know? The thing is, she didn't know, but she goes, but when I found the Lord, I found the Lord. My life was never the same. My life was never the same. And I want to tell all of you beautiful, beautiful mothers that the Lord looks at us and he thinks we're beautiful. When we have the light of Jesus, it doesn't matter if we're 18, 40, 60, 100 years old, if the Lord gives us that many years but we can shine with beauty a gentle and quiet spirit is what the lord loves although i'm not quiet all the time but it's like you know i'm just i get so excited because i'm like lord as as i get older he's like you're gonna still shine you're still gonna work for me you're still gonna pull people in but he's looking for mary's he's looking for mary's Elizabeth's, Hannah's, and there'll be one day. There will be one day. And I'm thinking, if we sacrifice for the Lord now, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking the day that we see Christ's face, do we want to go empty handed? I don't want to go empty handed. And so I want to bring my family and my friends. And, you know, I think about. I think about wonderful uh, women um, like Mother Teresa. You know, she didn't have she didn't have natural babies, but they called her Mother Teresa. She was an amazing woman of God. You know, she was a Catholic woman that, at the age of eighteen, she said, "I want to go to India. I'm ready." I mean, she had a she knew what her job was to do, and she stayed focused on it. And today, she's gone, but we we remember her. Not because of what she wore and the brands of clothing she wore. All that fades. They remember her because of her love. She loved them babies. I mean, she opened up orphanages and fed the homeless. You know, we can be so, how do I say, how do I want to say this? We could be so spiritually minded that we're no earthly good. And it's like the Lord wants us to serve and get our hands dirty. And then all the spiritual stuff, like yeah. the, the birthing and all that, that will come. Yeah. You know, but first things first. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's serve the Lord. And then during prayer and fasting, if he wants to birth something out of us, if he's got that breeding ground, he sure will. He will. But we have to be willing. We have to be willing. But that's what he's looking for. And I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. Can we just have all the mothers stand today? We just want to honor all the women Oh, my goodness. Can we just give them applause? They're just so beautiful.
All of you women have purpose and you have destiny. And the Lord wants to use each one of you greatly. You are all so uniquely special. Don't let anybody in the world tell you you're not special. And this world, this world needs you. We need to rise up and be the women of God that we've been called to be. Because sometimes it's, it's the mothers that are praying those babies into heaven. The grandmothers, the daughters, the ones that are pregnant, that are expecting, you are all so beautiful and unique. And God wants to use you greatly. And at this time, if we can have all the mothers come up front, we have something for you. And I think we have a poem from Dina. And she's going to come up and share with you. If we can have just all the mothers come up here in the front. You all look so beautiful. We just honor you today, mothers. Mothers. 